All right, the Wolverines, 77 to 69 win over rival Ohio State. They are still not on the bubble. That's what the bracketology experts from fielding the 68 tell me. They got a lot of work to do. I said a week ago after the blowout loss to Penn State, one more loss, you can stick a fork in them, they're done. They follow that up with a road win against Northwestern this week and a solid victory against an Ohio State team that somehow the metrics still like, even though they've now lost nine of their last 10 games. That's insanity. So let's go to you first here, RC. I'm still here saying, hey, they're not in. They're not even close to in. But the season is still alive. Is that an appropriate feeling for me as a Michigan fan right now? No, it is because they got Nebraska next. They got to obviously have that one. And then they get Indiana. And that that at home, that that's going to turn into a must-win game for them. They need that resume building. And listen, it's the Big Ten. It's going to be loaded with quad one opportunities. But they got to get that one at home against Indiana. That'll be a signature win coming off everything that Indiana just did and with the momentum they have just beating Purdue. So they, they got to stack. They got to stack some games together and win some games. But they got winnable games. I think they will. I think they'll get. They'll. I think they'll do enough maybe to sneak in at the end. The the great thing about being in the Big Ten is that you have the opportunity yes. to be able to get wins every time. Um, yeah. So you mentioned Nebraska. After that, every game that they play throughout the rest of the regular season is a game that is going to be, I believe a quad one opportunity, except for the home game against Wisconsin, right? You got Indiana at home. You're at Wisconsin. You got Michigan state at home. You're at Rutgers. You got Wisconsin at home. You're at Illinois and you end the season at Indiana. Now on the one hand, it's great to have those opportunities. On the other hand, like you could legitimately go 0 seven in that run. And it would not shock me with the way that Michigan has played so far this season. Right? So, um, the question is, do you believe, Greg, and you watch this team more than any of us. You probably know them better than any of us. Do you believe that this is a group that has figured it out to the point where they can win, let's say they got, what, eight games left? Can they win five of those? Uh, I think they can, but I think it's largely because of who they're going to play in those games. Like, I think they're going to hold serve against Nebraska at home. Then you've got the big opportunity against Indiana at home, which I'm going to be at, by the way, for college hoops to go. Cannot wait. Season on the line game for my team. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but then even after that, it's like they're they're at Wisconsin, which suddenly looks like an extremely winnable game. Northwestern just went on the road and got one there. Um, and then three massive quad one opportunities at the end of the year at Rutgers, at Illinois, at Indiana. So to me, like... <sighs> I think they will be favored in a lot of these games. I think tonight's result was not any real sign of like, oh, Michigan turned the corner. I thought the story of this game was just the way that Chris Holtman defended Hunter Dickinson. That's the first time in months that Hunter hasn't been doubled off the catch almost every single time. I mean, he he. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was a health thing or what. Zed Key did not start the second half. He brought in Akpara, who just straight up was not ready to guard Hunter Dickinson one on one. Hunter had six straight points in about a minute and a half. Like, I, I don't know. I saw this Ohio State team a week ago at Assembly Hall too, and like they got a lot of talent, guys. Sensible is awesome. He's a bucket. He's a really fun player. But there's a lot of just bad habits with that basketball team right now. It's a lot of young guys. It's a lot of first-year transfer portal guys kind of mixing in. But there's just some weird body language stuff. I don't really think they buy in defensively. They're definitely more talented than where they're at in the Big Ten standings right now. But it's like when the going get, gets tough with that team, you just sort of expect them to crumble a little bit. To me, that was more of the story tonight. And if we want to flip that and say, oh, Michigan now has this opportunity they didn't have a week ago – I'm here for it. I don't really think that they've solved any of their issues, though, that they had earlier in the season. Yeah, what do you think of that, over, though, Rob? The, like, the do you trust Ohio State? The, the, the ones that they got were over Northwestern and Ohio State, which is kind of like, okay, you beat Northwestern and Ohio State, who's struggling. I, I just – this Ohio State thing is one that I can't figure out because on paper that looks like a team that should be really good, right? They have guys that can be versatile. They have a guy that's an absolute bucket getter. In uh in, in Bryce Sensible. They have guys that you would think are are good defenders. Bruce Thornton came with the reputation of being a good defender. Ice likely was a guy when he was at Oklahoma State, was a good defender. Um, we've seen Zed Key be a, a, an effective player. We know what Justice Suing is when he's healthy, and it just it hasn't clicked. And uh, you know, I understand why Ohio State fan, fans are frustrated. Um, I understand how uh, you know, not having success in the tournament compounded by the fact that it's year four for Holtman and he's having this kind of a season 
uh, get you all riled up. If you end up running that dude out to uh, to to Notre Dame, I think that you are going to seriously regret that decision because that dude is a uh, a very good basketball coach. Um, but I, it's been a mess at Ohio State this year, man. I, I'm surprised that that Holt hasn't gotten run more often than he has. I thought they did. I thought what Michigan did, what they was prepared. I, 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 Greg, the only thing I push back on you a little bit. I thought they tried to double him some early, and Michigan was prepared for him and carved him up. And then I just think they got concerned about it and, and didn't want to do it anymore. Um, and, and then after that, the last thing you want to be or the last problem you want to have a position you need to have difficulty defending is a, is a five man in the Big Ten. Like if you got d- yeah. difficulty defending the post in the Big Ten this year, this this is the wrong year for that. I think one of the issues is they're just a they're not a great shooting team. And they're a lot. They're a bunch of mid-range jump shot taking guys, and and as we all know, that's one of the worst shots in basketball. But they're just not a great shooting team, and and it's hard, you know, it, it when you're not really good offense. Sometimes your offense cannot be good enough, and it puts so much pressure on your defense. And I don't know. There's not there, there's not rim protection there. It's not like they got a guy in the back that and everything breaks down as an eraser. So it, it, they're just they're in a tough league. They're having an average year. They've been struggling lately, and. But they're they're one of those teams that again they they're gonna win some games down the stretch here and gonna upset some people and and they're right there. I mean the metrics love them. Uh, like it's hard to imagine a team making a tournament going into February losing nine out of ten games. But we'll see what happens. I mean the league's a monster. They'll get more opportunities. But I thought tonight. They hey, just what if what if this happens? Hurt. You beat Northwestern at home. You beat Michigan State at home. You beat Iowa on the road. You win those three games, and all of a sudden you are playing Purdue in Assembly Hall for an opportunity to maybe make it to the NCAA tournament. They lost to Purdue at home on one possession. They had the ball down by two with a chance to take the lead, and they fucked up the final play of that uh, of that possession. I remember, like, it was uh, Bruce Thornton made a mistake trying to get the ball to Bryce Sensabaugh. It was uh, a freshman thing to happen. But you win three games, and you got Purdue, and that's a chance for you to get into the NCAA tournament. So it's like, it's not like they're out of it. They got the numbers, right? They got the metrics. Sometimes that's the hardest part. Now you just need to actually go out and win some games. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to responsibly be heading over to Bet Rivers and putting sizable amounts that that won't happen, though. <laughs> I mean, what are, just saying, what are we like, doing? What are it we ain't doing? over yet. Yeah, like if the it team that's lost yet. nine of their last ten just wins three straight in the next week and a half. Sure, yeah, you that'd be know. great. Uh, can know. I can I push back on you on Holtman, though? Did you say – did I get a, quote, great coach from you on Holtman? Did I say great? I thought so. Maybe I'm putting words in your mouth here, but like – he he I, He can coach. He can coach. What does that mean in terms? I think of it's like premature to be Ohio calling State. a boy's job. I think it's premature yeah. for that. I, that's all I'm saying. If you're okay. talking about running them out of town, I, I think that's ridiculous. Okay, Unless, that's, and I, if you I, do run them out, run them out for who? Uh, mm-hmm. I, so I would want to see how this season ends at least before I pick up the pitchfork. But like, I mean, this this is a pretty crazy extended stretch of pretty horrible basketball from this group. The only thing I would just say, like looking at Holtman, who he's been his entire career, even prior to Ohio State. I mean, in 10 of his 12 seasons as a head coach, he's lost 10 or more games. Like, there's losing seasons sprinkled in here. He's never had. Yeah, but but you got to put some of that into context, right? Well, he he was one of the guys that helped transition Butler from the Atlantic 10 to the Big East. So it's not like he's walking into this great position. Butler, I'd make the argument, is the worst job in the Big East. And he found a way three straight seasons to get to the NCAA tournament mm. at Butler. In terms of like spent, maybe it's not the worst because DePaul still exists, right? Yeah. But um, <laughs> he <laughs> he he found a way to take a job that is not it at the very minimum. It was not sexy. the top half of jobs in the Big East Conference, and found a way to get them into the NCAA tournament three straight years. 